through 1 Peter chapter 2. Now let me ask you something before you turn there. If you were going to make a chocolate cake, would you take your cookbook and just keep flipping through it until it ran into chocolate cake? No, you go to the index and look up cake chocolate. Put your finger in the index in your body. Hello. It's all this slipping and fanning and carrying on trying to find the scripture. You ain't impressing nobody. You till you're wasting our time. Go to the index and find out where it is. Amen. 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 Now, for those of you who don't know me, I'm saying, I'm that, that, that old country preacher. I just tell it. I don't try to fix it up none. Go ahead. First Peter chapter 2, chosen verse 1 says this. Wherefore laying aside all malice and all guile, all hypocrisies and envies, and all evil speaking. Oh Lord have mercy. Let's, let's go to the next verse. We'll leave that alone. Because we don't want to get into that. <laughs> As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, that ye may grow thereby. If so, be ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious. Mm. Now notice, it's telling you to desire. Yes. You see, as pastors, we get tired sometimes of begging folks to read their Bible. Amen. Come on, man. So we all know from the beginning now that God's word says that it's your job to desire, right. to desire, Come to on. want, yes. to want Go ahead. the sincere milk of the word. Amen. Now some folks say, you know, I just go there for the singing. Some folks say, I just go there because I got a new outfit. That's Easter, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, on Easter, you can't get into church, it's full. Unless y'all are too. Folks ain't had a wig on in their life. Got, got a wig on, <laughs> high heel shoes. I mean, you know, this, I see you fellas, I didn't know you owned a suit. They fell in the church on Easter in a suit. Kind of scared me. I said, hey, I, hey look, I ain't give you some new clothes. Y'all come here looking too good at me. But you need to be desiring the word of God. And there's a reason for that. We're going to get into that in a little bit. But go on to verse 4. It says this. To whom coming as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious. Ooh. See, some of us have been dissed by everybody. Mm -hmm. Now you ride a motorcycle. Yes, sir. And you know, some folks see you on a motorcycle, they assume things about you. I'm going to tell you something. Akilah Copeland's married to a woman named Gloria Copeland. And they both ride motorcycles. Mm -hmm. And you want to talk about a woman full of the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. Not like Akilah, but, but Gloria. Ooh. Try Gloria to walk by you and the Holy Ghost slap you in the face. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and, and that girl rides a whole bunch of motorcycles. Are you going to understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Amen. You judge people. We'll get that later. <laughs> <laughs> And you say that they can't be. But I'm going to tell you something. If you ever go to a, 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 a ride night when everybody gets around the fire and gets to pray and serve you, oh, Lord, have mercy. Child, you ain't never been in a church like that. You ain't never been in a church like that. I challenge you, find you a club of Christian bikers Amen. that are going on a night ride. Mm -hmm. Ooh, you'll never be the same. Now, don't be think you'll get no pot and no beer. <laughs> you gonna get some words. That's right. And if you ain't really got the Holy Ghost, you gonna get it. You real? You real? Are you being understood? What I'm saying. Man. But it's not, not only bikers. Folks been trying to tell people they couldn't be saved for years. Right. I remember they told me I couldn't be saved if I had the mark of, of Cain. That's they said that's what black people had. That's why my skin was dark. It was the mark of Cain. I said, Oh well. Then they got over that. Then they said, well, you can't, you can't be saved. So, oh, Lord, they got over. So I just asked, is, are you going to tell me I can't be saved because I'm fat next? <laughs> Hello. I mean, you're looking, you're looking for reasons. Jesus said, 
I come that you might have life. Ah, Amen. Not that you might have salvation or death. Ah, I come that you might have life, that you might have it more abundant. Go ahead, go ahead. Verse 5 says this. Ye also as lively stones are built up a special, a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Unto you therefore which believe, he is precious, yeah. but unto them which diso be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner. A stone of stumbling, a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient whereunto they are also they are appointed. But ye, but ye, but ye, all of you people that have been told you can't be saved. Oh, all of you people whose families have disowned you. Uh -huh. All of you people that have been judged by others come as on. you have come around. All yes. of you that everybody has turned their back on. on. God says this, but ye are a chosen generation. Uh -huh. God has chosen uh -huh. you that have been rejected Glory. by men. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Oh, I like that. Yeah. And I've had some rejection in my day. Oh, Hello. Ah. I mean, you know, you know when you're ugly, you know when you're ugly, you walk in places, ah. people look at you, they say stuff like, mm, what's your blue? Ain't nobody gonna blue to him. Mm. That's rejection. Mm. You, you can't have to be Some of us just born ugly. <laughs> I'm gonna leave that alone. <laughs> <laughs> But ye are chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. That means that folks reject you because they don't understand you. Uh -huh, that's yeah. right. To them, you are peculiar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A peculiar people. That ye should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness mm. into his marvelous light, mm -hmm. which in time past were not people. But are now the people of oh come on. I was asking the Holy Ghost folks to be here with me. In time past, we're not a people. Come on. Come on now. We're not a people. You weren't even recognized as human. Think about that. You weren't even recognized as human. They thought you they like you some some mega human or something. Something from outer space. But this is what God says. But are now the people of God. Yes. Which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Amen. My mind. I like that. Amen. My mind. I'm, I'm so glad that there was somebody that, 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 that dissed me. Go ahead. I'm so glad that there was somebody that judged me. Yeah. I'm so glad that there was somebody that says you can't be. I'm so glad that somebody mm. gave me a chance to be sitting here. In the household of faith. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yes. Go ahead. Yes. Because now I'm a chosen That's generation. Right. I'm a peculiar That's right. people. That's right. And we need to understand that we need to know who we are in Christ Jesus. Right. Because the Bible says that we are a living stone in verse 4, we just read. Yes. And we're built on the foundation of the chief cornerstone. Now, I'm going to tell some of you something that you may not have really known. You have heard, but you haven't known. You are no longer a stranger in the household of faith. Amen. You are no longer a stranger in the household Amen. of faith. Amen. And that's important to understand. Because you have been rebellious. Because you didn't think you belonged. Mm. Mm. Hello. Preach. Go ahead and preach. Go ahead. You didn't think you were, you are not. Look over Ephesians chapter two. I I I, I got, you know I hate these preachers because we tell you all this stuff and and don't don't know where it is. Make me wonder if they read it themselves. Leave it alone. Ephesians 
chapter 2, starting verse 19, says this. Now, therefore, ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints of the household of God, mm. and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto an holy yes. temple in the Lord. And whom ye also are building together for a habitation of God through the Spirit. It's Ephesians chapter 2, verses 19 through 22. But we need to understand that, that we are to build upon the foundation that Christ has laid. And this is where we get into trouble. We try to build with the improper tools. Mm. I don't know if you've ever worked on a car. If you've ever worked on a car and tried to pull a spark plug with wire pliers, you have issues. It won't work. You might get away with it on a motorcycle, I mean on a lawnmower. But on a, you get you got to have the right tool to get the job done. That's right. Amen. Amen. That's right. You see you see some of these people walk around right here, too too cheap to, to, to buy a pistol. And so they, they try to take a crayon and, and, and draw the eyeliner thing. Mm. <laughs> you got to have the right tool. Amen. 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 You got to have the right tool. Amen. You know, if, if, if you don't know about makeup, you got to get the right tools. You just can't take powder and throw it at your face. <laughs> you got to pat it on somehow. <laughs> Amen. You know, if you want to fix your eyebrows up, you just can't take a razor blade and just go like this. You got to use the proper tools. Uh, how many of y'all be in the same program when I talk about the proper tools? Because you see, there's some, there's some folks that are part of the family of God, they're trying to build on their foundation, but they're not using any tools. Mm. They're, they're, they're using the wrong tools. They're, they're using the, the tools that, that, that are of no profit. Tools that will do them no good. Because you see, the first tool that you're going to have to use as a child of God That's right. is the Word. Yes. Hello. Yes. Amen. You have to use the Word as a tool. Anybody, anybody learn anything today? Yep. Well, it's important, you see. You have to, that means that you got to read it to, to, to use it. Come on now. You can't talk about something you ain't never heard. Mm -hmm. The Word is the first tool that you have to have in your arsenal to be able to build upon that foundation. Mm -hmm. right. Come on now. If you don't have the Word, because you can use words that are of no profit and you can't build on the foundation. Mm. People are wondering sometimes why why, why they can't uh, 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 accomplish things in their lives. Because they're using the word to no profit. They're not using the word to build. They're using the word to tear it. Come on. They use the word to tear it down. How many of y'all begin to understand what I'm saying? Uh, look with me if you would to 2 Timothy chapter 2. And remember the index. Don't be fan of me up here. Remember the index. 2 Timothy chapter 2. I'm here. Amen. 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 And start with verse 14. It says this. Of these things put them in remembrance, charging them before the Lord that they strive not about words to no profit, mm. but to the subvert subverting of the hearers. Study. Oh, you don't have to say it again. Study not to impress the other people in the church. Ah, go ahead. Go Study ahead. not to beat somebody up with the words. Come on, man. Study show to show thyself approved. Yes. You see, you need to understand something. You hear so much garbage during your life. You, you don't even know that you that you approve of God. Right. Mm -hmm. You got to, you got to use the word. Come on now. That'll profit you to be able to let, Come on, y'all. Yes. I believe I believe some of y'all missing this. Come on. You got to use that word to profit you to build on that foundation that Jesus laid as the chief cornerstone. Right. You see, Amen. Jesus. Come on now. I, I, I tried to be cool. Y'all, 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 y'all ain't missing. Let me, let me take you back a little bit here. 
Matthew chapter 12, we got to turn that. We're just going to skip to that a little bit there. Jesus was on the cross dying. And some of you have heard this before. And the Bible says that the earth began to quake and the sky turned dark and the veil was split in the temple, all that stuff happened. But you need to understand it didn't happen because Jesus died. That's the lie we've told to no prophet. They stabbed him, pierced his side. Earth didn't quake. They put vinegar in his mouth, earth didn't quake. They beat him, earth didn't quake. But when he took on our sin, it was so heavy and so detrimental to us that it shook the foundations yes. of the earth. Yes. Yes. You see, we haven't used that word to prophet. We've used that word to tear people down. Come on. We said, oh yeah, Jesus, Jesus was he was so powerful that when he died and gave up the ghost, the earth shook. Though the earth shook because he took on all of our sin. Yes. That weight yes. shook the earth. Yes. That weight tore that veil that separated in the temple. That's right. That weight stopped the sun from not leaving that thing alone. Come on. You see, that's that word that builds upon this. Mm -hmm. You see how it builds? See how it builds? Come on, brother. Oh, I, I, well, I like this. this it wasn't bad for Jeff Carroll, was it? Is that right, Jeff? Yeah, oh, look here, look here. Okay, boy, did it. Look here. Look here, look here. <laughs> so you need to study to show yourself approved so that you properly use the word. So you don't start going around telling a lie. Yeah, you know, when Jesus died, the earth began to shake. Mm. No, the earth began to shake because of our sin. Mm. And he was holding it all. Mm. That's why I tell people that don't, don't give something to the Lord and take it back. Do you know how heavy sin is? Mm. Do you know the weight of that sin? And you keep taking it back? You ought to be glad I ain't God. I may be keep But you know, you know, I get that time. Bless Jesus. How about this? Got to be saying things I ain't going to be saying. <laughs> Study to show thyself approved under God. A workman. Uh oh. Uh oh. We always skip over that word and say workman. <laughs> that means you're doing something for God. That's what a workman is. Amen. We, a workman is not sitting in the pew. Mm -hmm. Hello. So he's made you a minister of reconciliation. Uh oh. Mm -hmm. That's what the word says. Yeah. See, if you study the word, you make yourself feel you know it. Your job is to reconcile. Mm -hmm. Come on now. I ain't talking about re reconciling a bunch of idiots and another bunch of idiots. <laughs> I'm talking about reconciling people back to Jesus. That's right. Yeah. Hello. That's right. See, we, we, we use that word to no avail. Mm -hmm. Talking about what well, God said, He's supposed to make everybody like everybody. Those folks Jesus didn't get along with. You think I'm lying going to the temple when they was there with they was uh, changing their money? <laughs> All right, now I'm leaving thing alone. Tell the truth. A workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Now some people have tried to use the word and didn't want to divide it rightly. They want to divide it verily. They want to use their opinion. Mm -hmm. For instance, the Levitical law was a very important law. You know, the Levitical law, uh, chapter 12 of Leviticus, is, is, is a chapter that, that, that really touches my heart. Because uh, uh, there are none of us that on the face of this earth that did not come from a woman at some point. That's right, man. Now, now, now Daddy was a maiden, but Mama was a show thing. <laughs> Mama was there. I don't care if you're Syrian or natural. Mama was there. If you if you don't know what I'm talking about, if you ever go ask and see if you can get permission to go and watch the Syrian, um, they go in there and get that child. They don't just lightly take it up with the neck and call. They got to pull and jerk and twist and turn. You know, it, she may be hurting in a different spot, but she still hurt. Bella, she shook up for a while. So no matter how the woman is, obviously their presence. And, and and you see the Levitical law. Was, 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 was a problem for women. Mm -hmm. Because if when, when, when a woman was, her body was preparing her to be able to carry a child, and, and, and the blood, the blood, because see, what made you a Jew was your mother's bloodline, not your daddy's. That's, that's why Jesus was 
Because he's over here thing along. Wait, wait, wait. Leave me alone. I'm trying to I'm trying to not to get sidetracked here. I'm, about, I'm old, my mind goes. It just go where Yeah. Please. You know, we supposed to be going across the field and trying to go around the corner. <laughs> but anyway. In Leviticus chapter 12, it, it talks about uh, how the woman, you know, they, they, they teach that she's unclean mm. during this time. Now, how is that which brings life into the world something unclean? We knew, man. But see, God had to break it down because he said the law was our school bath. Galatians chapter 3, verse 24. The law was our school bath to bring us to the Christ. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so if we didn't have the law, we wouldn't even know we needed Christ. Oh, study right. right. Yeah, that's right. right. Listen, I know this is right. You know, study yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. And so they say this is the big one on clean, you know. And, you know, if you touch the door knob, she touched, you got to go get you some doves and some turtles and some stuff to clean yourself up because you've never been unclean because you touched something that this woman during this particular time has touched. Mm -hmm. And so that, that was what the law said. And you know, we still got folks today trying to talk about love. You heard that man talk about a woman, if she, if she has decided she has to abort the child, it may be killing her, that she ought to be punished. I'm going to leave that thing alone when you talk about that. I need to talk about politics and put me. But I want you to understand something. I just want to make sure that you don't understand that, 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 that word, be real, be real, be the real. word ought to be edified and building up the body of Christ. But anyway, here, here's what I want to say. And call it a self evangelist. I'm going to leave that thing alone. But anyway, the video is chapter 12. And so, 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 when Jesus came, he said this, I did not come to Matthew chapter, uh, what's it, Matthew chapter uh, 17, Matthew chapter, chapter 5, Jesus said, Matthew chapter 5, I did not come to destroy the law, but to fulfill, oh, ah, hallelujah, Amen. then why did he come, why did he destroy the law, because if he destroyed the law, some folks will never get saved, because they will never know they needed Jesus, come on, read your Bible, folks, Amen. study to show you, come on, Amen. Come on. I wish y'all would stay here with me. Right there with you. Come on, come on. So the law has to continue to exist until everybody knows Jesus. Yeah, amen. That's why. Not to beat you up. Come on. Hello. Mm -hmm. You ought to be thankful you had a mother. Because mm -hmm. if been up us men, you would not have ever been born. Trust me. That's right. The word would have got out. <laughs> and you just would have come. It'd been it. You'd be the end of the life. I've been telling you. If you don't believe me, just try it for yourself. So Jesus said, I didn't come to, to destroy the law, but I came to fulfill it. Mm -hmm. Now, if you look over Mark chapter 5, I, I'm running out of time, I can't run there. There's, there's a moment that's like Mark chapter 5, there's a moment the issue of blood. Mm -hmm. Now, this woman was a well known woman because she used to have money. And I can see, because you know how church folks are, they, they watch who's coming. I can see them when they saw her approach. She heard Jesus was in town. <laughs> and she said, I, I just need to touch the hem of his garment. Mm -hmm. and just so you know the reason she wants to touch the hem of his garment and not his arm and not have him anoint her and all that other stuff. Because the word was on the, the, the hem of their clothes they wore. They, 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 they tacked the scriptures or the word. And so she needs to to grab the word. Come on. Mm. Uh, study, yeah. study, study, study. She needs to be a prophet. She needs to grab the word. And so she as she made her way through the crowd, I could hear God's people there. Can you believe that now? Now I got to go out the uh. <laughs> I can't believe she can't she knows it's gonna be a crowd. Jesus is here. And she come busting up in here and messing with everybody. Changing my life. I was planning on going to the movie tonight. My, my, my. I had a hot day. <laughs> You probably should have been on that day, no. But don't leave that thing alone. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I'm beginning to understand what it is. So when she got to Jesus, you know, she 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 got that garment, she got that word. Uh -huh. She got a hold of the word. <laughs> she got a hold of the yes. word. Go ahead. Go ahead. She didn't touch Jesus. She touched the word. Mm -hmm. But see, in the beginning was the word. And the word, and the word was, was God. Oh, oh, Jesus is the word. So you see, she, she, she got the full blessing. And, 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 and when she touched the word, everything began to change. <laughs> she got cleaned up. Yeah. Oh, she got cleaned up. And then, 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 then Jesus, you know, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus. See, see people, people try to say Jesus don't have no personality. Mm -hmm. But Jesus had a lot of personality. He said, hey, Pete, who is that that touched me? And you know Pete, you know Pete, you know, Pete, Pete got the issues. He got issues. It, uh, Jesus, you know all these people bumping up against you. How about I'm going to tell you? 
And I'm sure Jesus said, you're supposed to be one of my holy folks. Yeah. You're supposed to recognize. Yeah. Hello. She said, virtue left me. Yeah. A change Whew. has been made. Yeah. A fulfillment yeah. has taken place. Yeah. That Levitical law that says a man can't shave, now he can shave. Yeah. That Levitical law that says you can't cut your hair, you can cut your hair now. Yeah. That Levitical law says that you can kiss your wife goodbye as you lock it out the door even when she's that time is no longer a problem. Amen. That Levitical law Amen. has been taken care of. Amen. Amen. Leviticus chapter 11 when it tells you all that stuff you can't eat. You can Amen. now eat it. It's called virtue. Go. Go. Yes. Ooh. Yes. Oh, come on. Yes. My mama. Are uh, you seeing how we build on this foundation? Yes. Oh, yeah. oh. yes. Oh. Ooh. Ooh. I'm about to get excited. Come on. Come on. Uh, you see, the Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 4 that the word of God is sharper than a two-edged sword. Mm -hmm. yes. See, if you didn't know that word that virtue had left when she got a hold of the word, <laughs> it was so sharp that when, 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 when the sword came down to get to the medical law <coughs> this way and the other pages fell on top of it, it was sharp on the other side and cut it into two. It was just good stuff. Amen. What is stuff mean to slap somebody? Uh, oh, why did that clock keep moving? <laughs> I try, I, I'm trying, I'm trying to try, try to get here. Look over Hebrews chapter four real quick. I, I'm trying, I'm trying to, uh, I'm, I'm trying to get through here. Y'all know, you know, I'm, 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 I'm a nugget, nugget preacher. I just try to look at this nugget stuff. Hebrews chapter four. You can't dance. Don't be fanning nobody. Hebrews chapter 4. Amen. Amen. Verse 12 says this. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. Oh, oh look at Leviticus. Go on, Leviticus. You out of here. I like that. Leviticus, you are gone. Yeah. And of the joints and moral, and as a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Mm -hmm. But see, the word is not the only tool that you have to have in your arsenal. Right. You got to have his blood. Mm -hmm. Yes. Amen. You see, uh, uh, it was his blood that was shed for the remission of sins. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. It wasn't him saying, I love you. His blood was shed for remission of sins. But look at Matthew chapter 26, because it talks about something that, 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 that we don't really think much about. It. But Matthew chapter 26 is a very important chapter to us as the people of God. Matthew chapter 26. Uh, they were having the Last Supper. And we, we got an impression that uh, if you ever been to a Seder, they, they, they messed it up a lot. Uh, they start the Seder off with the Last Supper. <laughs> they were already eating when Jesus began to bless the elders. I lie. Verse 26, chapter 26, Matthew says this. And as they were eating, oh, and as they were doing what? Eating. As they were doing what? Eating. So don't, don't let nobody tell you this. <laughs> You know, Jesus just jumped up there and sat down at the table and said, I want to break something down to y'all. Child, they was having a good time. They were doing like church folks do. They were eating. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus took bread and blessed it and break it, gave it to the disciples and said, Take this in my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it, for this is the blood of the new to oh Lord. Mm -hmm. Jesus, Jesus let them know what's coming. I got a new testament for y'all. Ah. You're not stuck with that old testament where you can't be who you are no more. You, you're not stuck with that old testament where people can judge you just by looking at you. Go ahead, go ahead. It's what's on the inside now. Because remember what he said? And that's why he had to straighten Nicodemus out. He said, I'm going to give you a new heart. Amen. I'm going to wash you clean with the oh, water. Amen. Oh, I ain't got time to do that. Oh, so oh, y'all trying to get me excited. I'm trying to be oh, cool. Man. Trying to be cool. Preach it, bro. Come on. Which is shared for many for the remission of sin. Mm -hmm. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new 
with you in my Father's kingdom. Mm. If we say, well, yeah, that day when you die, you, you're going to have communion with Jesus. God, that day when he said it. He said in his Father's kingdom. If you're involved in kingdom living right now, mm -hmm. that blood <laughs> is covering you now. Amen. You ain't got to die to get covered. Amen. Right. That's some good news. Amen. That's some good news. That blood's on me now. Yes. Well, child, I can walk down the street. You can say what you want to say. Yes, Sticks and stones may break my bones, but that word will knock you out. That blood is on me. Amen. I'm covered in his blood. And it's important. And, 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 and it's important. And this is why it's important. Because most of us have a past. That's right. That's right. Hello. That's right. Now I don't know about you, but I've done some things that just wasn't quite right. Mm -hmm. I, I haven't always been a preacher. Preach. Preach. And I definitely have not always read the word. There were times that uh uh, uh let, me, let me say this before I word it from. You see, we've been lying about forgiveness in the church. Forgiveness is not forgetting. That's it. Right. That's you forget, right. You forget. Forgiveness is not holding you accountable Amen. any longer. That's right. Because if, if forgiveness was forgetting, Jesus wouldn't have known that you messed up. Amen. He forgot all about it. Hello. So don't be telling me, well, if you forgive me, if you forgive me, you forgot what I did all the line. I'm telling you right up front. I just ain't holding you accountable, but don't do it no more. Because, yeah. see, I, I ain't put that account back. That's what <laughs> I ain't Jesus. I'm just not holding you accountable. <laughs> so I, I, I remember what you did. Yeah. Don't be no fool. <laughs> are, are, how many of y'all understand this? Yeah. Are y'all learning this today? Yeah. See, this ain't nugget time. This is sermon time. Amen. See, sermon, the Bible says that he gave preacher, teacher, man for the building up of the body. Mm -hmm. this, this is where you learn stuff. That nugget is where you, yeah. start, where you get something to start working on. Are you, are you starting to understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. so, so it's very important that we as the people of God, you're going to get some more of that chicken. I am. I've been, I've been trying not to <laughs> rush you, brother. No, you keep going. Take a minute. The yard bird's important. You need a great job. Thought you knew. Bye bye, I ain't that far away. So you need to be understood. So that, 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 that blood uh, allows God not to hold me accountable <laughs> for my past. Amen. Ooh, that's a good thing to know. Yes. That, that God still loves me, but I'm not accountable for the problems that I made in my, in my past. Because the Bible, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, go over with me for a minute. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. That's after Romans, in case you're wondering. Chapter 5. Say Corinthians chapter 5. I'm almost out there. You there? I'm there. I'm there. there. Alright, start verse 17 says this. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things that become new. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given us the ministry of reconciliation. To wit that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not to impute their trespasses unto them. Not saying he don't know that they did it. Not holding them responsible. That's what he said. He's, are are y'all with me? Right. He's not holding you responsible for the thing that you've done. Yeah. And has committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. Mm -hmm. As though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead. Be ye reconciled to God. Now this is important because if you read Acts chapter 11, I'm not going to go all the way through that, but Acts chapter 11 was a very important chapter because that's when God had, uh, just had to straighten Peter out. He, he, he didn't go through, so he just straightened Peter out himself. Peter was uh, 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 needed to minister to some Gentiles. So folks that weren't Jews. And, and Peter was still in the Old Testament frame of mind. And so God gave him a vision. And in this vision, God lowered down on the sheet four-footed beasts and creepy things. 
and things that the Old Testament in Leviticus chapter 11 says you couldn't eat. Are you with me? So you got, you got to keep up. You got, that's why you got to study. You know, I got to know all this stuff made work together. Stuff you weren't supposed to eat. And God said to Peter, hey boy, Pete, eat. You know, Pete, Pete going to show God how holy he is. Oh, no, Lord. I will never put anything unclean in my mouth. God said, I'm going to try this one more time. I told you to eat. Lord, I told you I will not put anything unclean in my mouth. God said, look here, boy, let me tell you something. What I have clay made clean, let no man call unclean. Amen. That's right. That's right. Amen. God forgave you of your sin. God. Let no man Come on. call unclean. Mm. Go ahead, man. Call you a sinner saved by grace. You are a child of God. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Come on. Sin is no longer a part of who you are. Come on. Yeah. Don't let anybody tell you that you cannot walk in the kingdom of God. You can build on that foundation yes. that Christ gave you because of his blood. And you properly use the word because God has cleaned you up. Hallelujah. And let nobody now call you. Unclean. Hallelujah. I tell you, before we leave this building, there's some of us are going to tell God, thank you. God, I just want to tell you, thank you. I know you've saved me already. But I just want to tell you, thank you. Yes. Yes. Did you, brought, you brought me to your house even after Easter. I came to church. Amen. Yes. Mm. Come on now. Because I found out that you love me. Come on. You see, I heard John 3 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. Who shall believe him should not perish but have everlasting life? Most of us have never heard verse 17. For God sent not his Son to the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Amen. You see, I'm going to tell you a little secret. <coughs> Romans chapter 12, verse 1 says this I beseech you, therefore, brother, by the mercies of God, that you present yourselves a living sacrifice. Oh, that means, that means you ain't got to wait till you get down and can't get around. Amen. That's right. Come on, come to be on. a sacrifice. That's right. You can be a sacrifice when you get around. Amen. When you are who you are. That's right. You just listen. Holy and acceptable unto God. And this, this gets me. Which is your reasonable service. That's right. Amen. God doesn't think he's asking you something out of reason. Come on. Be not conformed to this world. Come on, this world that says because you ride a bike, you ain't no good. That you got something evil in your mind. When y'all get around that campfire, y'all end up getting high and drinking. No, you can't conform yourself to those thoughts no more. And you said, hey, you can't do that no more. Because see, they're a new creature in Christ Jesus. Come on, yeah. come on. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Amen. And this is the part I like. That ye may prove. Well, you can't prove nothing. God said that ye may prove yes. what is that good Amen. and acceptable and perfect will of God. Amen. Ooh, that, that, that makes you get up and slap somebody. Amen. Amen. I can prove that God loves me just like I am. Amen. Because you see, I build it with those tools that he gave me, his word. And I'm not using his word for us to no profit. I'm using where it's profitable. I'm not using his blood wait till I get to heaven. I'm using his blood in my body and in my life right now. Are you beginning to understand? Amen. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That, 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 now you see different between a nugget and a sermon, right? But you see, this is, this, this is important for us to understand because some of us have been running around here in the church, running around here in the church, and you know, well, I think I, I, I'm not really sure. Open your Bible and read it. Amen. If you fall asleep while you're reading, you wake up, read some more. True. You know, it, it don't shame to fall asleep. I fall asleep watching a good movie. Amen. You know, I see you fall asleep reading a good word. Amen. Come on. You need to begin to start studying, church. You need to desire, desire the word. Amen. You desire. You know, you know, have you ever seen a car that you want? 
you didn't desire me? You know, I, I got to hell. Well, I want two jobs. Come on. You better preach. Uh, somebody <laughs> that, you, that you would like to uh, get to know. You put on your best thing. No, you a dog. No, you a dog. And you act like you're the nicest person in the world. <laughs> Hello. Let's keep it real. <laughs> when you want everybody to church think that you're a saint. Hello. You go all the way across town to buy your bottle of wine. Child, Jesus don't care about you and your wine. The left, the left, is left, left the county. Try to buy that bottle. Just go get your wine and go home with it. We done with it. There's gonna be no fool to bring it all in one city. Are you, are you being understand what I'm saying? My, my, my. That's when you desire things. You desire something, you take your last nickel and buy a pack of cigarettes. Yeah, that's right. You know, you go to store, man, I ain't got no money by a pack. You can give you sell me one for three cents. You know how it works? That's a desire. God wants you to desire his word that way. Amen. That's tough. Because, you know, when you don't feel good, desiring to get that Bible out instead of his word is not exactly what you're going to have to buy. Better preach. But you need to understand, God wants you to desire as a newborn baby desires milk, Amen. he wants you to desire the milk of his word, Amen. even as a newborn child. How many of you understand that? Did, 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 is anybody getting anything out this morning? Amen. 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 You know something? See, y'all, I'm going to tell you, you know, Jesus was long winded. You know, folks will fall out of trees sleep when he preaches. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Y'all been listening to me for 55 minutes. So don't go and tell me that Sam is too long-winded. I can't <laughs> deal with that boy. <laughs> so, I'm, 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 I'm long. Yeah, I'm long-winded. I'm long-haired. I'm long-bearded. I'm a long lot. You know. Let me say, yeah, I'm. Long, I like Jesus. Amen. 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 call me a Christian. I'm like, but what I'm going to say because you see, I have to. The Bible says, build precept to precept. Nah. I just can't come out and tell you desire the milk of the word and then oh, sit down. Oh, see, you, you take that, you go with it. Yeah. <laughs> you run with it. And by the time y'all get through with Facebook, I'm going to leave it alone. I'm out. Right, I, 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 so are you here to understand? Man. So they don't, you know, don't, don't say that preach is preach is too long. You know, just sit there and bear. You might get something. So I believe tonight, that today was an opportunity for some of us to receive some things. If you didn't receive anything, it was your fault. What mine? I did what I was supposed to do. I did what I was supposed to do. All right, Deeks.